So Zip Wall made uh, these a while ago and then Trameco decided to one-up them because corporate America. So um, these are really nice for setting up secure booths, okay? Um, now, you're not usually gonna have 16-foot ceilings. Um, this is a bit of an exception, but um, this is basically like an extension pole right here versus anyone use zip walls. They're not bad, but they're just really thin. They break up top. These are a little bit more heavier duty. Um, they cost more too. I don't remember how much. Are they cheaper? Even better, right? Um, typically, oh look, he's drawing us something here. Typically what we're going to use these for are stabilization on walls and also in our corners so we can pull plastic around them, okay? Again, my goal is I want less stress. Um, I literally almost fired a guy while the booth around me started falling down because it wasn't secured properly. Like right in the middle of spraying the last couple of doors, the booth just starts giving because there's a lot of uh, pressure going in and out because we're ventilating everything, right? And, and the booth starts falling and you're just, uh, all I can think about is all the dust going throughout the rest of the house. And I'm just like, I was saying not nice things in my respirator about him and his mother. Um, like this is Chris's kitchen here. So he's got cabinets that go uppers and lowers that basically go around like that. You got the sink and you know, it's a kitchen. It's, you've seen one, you've seen them all. And he's got a dining room over here. So typically what we're going to do is we'll take that dining room table and we'll move that out into the living room and we'll use this space to create the booth. So an example like with this here, what we ended up doing is, what we would end up doing is we're going to do a seal here with a doorway and then we're going to run plastic all the way around the outsides of these walls here so that it's fully protected. And then we're going to create another spray booth in here. So we're gonna do kind of a secondary wall with a little doorway over that way because if the majority of the spraying is happening in here, I wanna keep that all contained versus having it all open in here and then you risk that dust kicking out to the rest of your cabinets. We're gonna ventilate out. So we got a doorway here. You can look for doorways, you can look for windows. Um, the thing I love about painting is there are variables on every project and you have to problem solve it, right? So sometimes it's, it's gonna be a lot harder to get these sets or these things set up, but we're typically almost always gonna be able to have enough space in a connected dining room to set up a spray booth. Um, I think on, for this one, we ended up setting them up in the living room. So we had drop cloths out here, everything's covered. And then again, however many people you have at your disposal, sometimes what we'll do is I'll just have one guy that runs from here to this doorway to the rest of the house and then hands that door out so that we don't have to have a big gap and then somebody hangs them all up. If it's just you and one other person, then this person's gonna get a lot of, they're gonna get a lot of steps in on their Fitbit. So v ventilation is extremely critical when it, if you're gonna be dealing with lacquers, which now we're gonna be eliminating, you know, using, um, you know, water-based coatings. So this is actually, you know, a key, like John sitting in here spraying in this booth, we use a box fan. There's gonna be a box fan sitting in that doorway right there, and that box fan is blowing out. So everything that John's spraying, it's sucking everything in his spray booth out and so um and that's critical that it's keeping you know it, that you know that concentration of lacquer inside that booth you know, extremely low so it's not only important to have you know a ventilation point you know here sometimes we even have you know a fan inside there pushing everything that direction to that fan but we also have a fan in um, another source like there's this we had a window right here, a kitchen window, so we had a box fan in that window. Because we're trying to control the environment, usually we'll also have, usually outside the booth, I'll have a fan that's like set up here, pointing this way to push air into the space so that stuff's not coming out. So we're circulating air in, it can ventilate out one or ideally even multiple windows. And then we'll also have, like you said, a fan sitting here or maybe out here if there's space. Again, every kitchen's gonna have a slightly different configuration and then one more pushing everything outside that we all tracking with that? Because we had, we had a, um, an air scrubber sitting here pointing that direction, forcing stuff to that fan. Um, you know, it's good to have a fan here and you could have, you know, if you had something 
creating you know pressure right there on that but you could also you know because you have a lot of lacquer curing right here you could have an air scrubber here pointing this direction pointing to this box fan which is pushing stuff outside the house so it's it's trying to develop some type of strategy you know to you know ventilate and move air in the right direction as soon as you eliminate you know these fans now you've just um, um, created basically a bomb sitting here if you don't have any of that you know ventilation going on so because usually what we're doing here is we're gonna typically we're gonna take this double-sided tape and we'll run it right at that ceiling line going around these walls here so that we can tack this plastic down and then pull it down tight so that the walls are completely covered so you don't have dust it we have a lot of like orange peel texture here and i want the dust sitting on the top of the texture and then we'll seal that down to the floor paper because remember that floor paper was done first and i want that plastic sealing and, and making a good seal and then we'll cut a doorway wherever we need a doorway so we'll run that along the outside right there. We'll cut a separate L to come in this way. And then where this plastic meets that plastic, we'll use the Super 77 from 3M, which is a spray adhesive. And you'll just take that, spray it along the plastic, and then push the plastic against it. And it creates a, a great seal. And it's way better than trying to sit there with tape and, and seal that piece all the way in. I mean, one of the big questions now is like, if we're spraying with Renner coatings, do we have to go to this, all this extent of doing this? I mean, I, I'm still, I mean, you're not so concerned about having air scrubbers and all this ventilation now. So I'm still gonna have a spray booth. I'm still gonna have a booth within a booth. This is, you know, two booths right here. And um, cause you're, you're, this system is gonna create a lot less dust than our system, but I'm still, I mean, I'm still gonna wanna protect everything. and and you know and be a little bit concerned about dust just push any type of fumes that may be coming out because this is really i mean it's it's literally that area is pretty dang small that we spray and it's it's enough where somebody can spray and pass a you know a door in and out of that booth so you're still going to want to ventilate here i probably still would want to ventilate there i don't think i need an air scrubber here i don't think i need an air scrubber there you still need some positive pressure there and I probably don't even need that there. These things drying in here, you're probably not even gonna smell anything. Nobody's, it's not even gonna bother them right there. So you've really, I mean, you've really eliminated the, the need for air scrubbers and you know, half your ventilation. So what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna kind of put a pin in this right here. Um, we've got some lunch, um, get up, move around. We'll have some lunch. So that's it for part two of this two part series. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video series. If you have, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, punch it, slam it, do whatever you wanna do. But if you wanna to come to one of our Paint Life Academies or get more information about our academies right here in beautiful Boise, Idaho, go check out our website, theidahopainter.com. Over on the right, there's a Paint Life Academy drop down menu that will give you a list of all the available academies that you can come to. Hopefully we'll see you there. Out. You really feel like they're engaged in what you're asking, they're interested in what you're asking. We're getting the feel for it, we're playing with it ourselves, learning, hey, are, the, what, are these guys telling us the truth? Let's, let's feel it for ourselves, you know? So that's really exciting and it's been a, been a great aspect to, this, to the Paint Life Academy. I love the hands-on experience, it's, it's nice. Yeah, you can watch YouTube videos and see this, but actually being here and being able to touch anything and be able to interact uh, just makes it real, real fun. You feel like you're at a family. They're just like they are on the videos, it's awesome. They're just open books and there's really um, just information that they're willing to share is, is just been amazing. I would recommend this to anyone. If you think you have a good system, if you think you know you know it all, come here. Just, just hear them out, let them try it, and I guarantee you they're doing something you're not.